Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. where Uncle Joe was, I didn't mean to start a two-story hollering match. <laughs> Mom! Yes? Uncle Joe isn't up here. <laughs> What's that? Isn't that the letter you asked Uncle Joe to mail for you? Well, that's where he is. He went to Sam's to buy a stamp. Why didn't he take the letter? That'd be too easy. <laughs> Sam. In a minute, Joe. A, a pound of what, Mrs. Quigley? Can I get a five-cent stamp? A pound of stamps? No, just one. Well, you keep your big mouth shut. Well, no, 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 not you, Mrs. Quigley. Now, what was it you wanted? A five-cent stamp. Well, how'd you like a punch in the nose? Well, no, not you, Mrs. Quigley. Hello? Hello? She hung up. Well, it's about time. Now, maybe I can get waited on. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, would you get Mrs. Quigley back for me? Good thing you wasn't in charge of the Pony Express or Garcia never would have got that message. <laughs> Stealing stamps is a federal offense. Not when the postmaster's yammering on the phone. Here's your nickel. Okay, you got your stamp. Now clear out. Hello, uh, Miss Quigley? Yeah, I'm sorry we were cut off. Now, what was it you wanted? Uh-huh. Yeah, and then... Hold him, Mrs. Quigley. What do you think you're doing? Changing stamps. Well, I can't sell this stamp. It's pre-licked. Well, I ain't gonna take it. All the glue's off of it. Hello, Mrs. Quigley. Uh, hello? She hung up again. I don't blame her. You don't run your store any better than you run your post office, and you run your post office worse than anyone I've ever seen. You don't like the way I run my post office. A baboon could run it better. Well, here's where we find out. You got yourself a post office. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, did you, uh... What's that? Post office. You went to town to buy a stamp and you came back with the post office? Hey, meet the new Hooterville postmaster. Oh, Uncle Joe, you better take that back before Sam misses it. Sam gave it to me. Sam gave you a post office? Yeah, I was interfering with his grocery business. Take it back. Hey, I've got a good reason for bringing this out here. Now, I'm a fool for asking, but what is it? Well, Kate, 90% of the business Sam gets is because he's got the post office there. People come in to buy a stamp, they end up buying groceries. 
I figure the same thing will work here. People will come in to buy a stamp and they'll rent a room. That's the reason. <laughs> Take it back. Kate, you just don't ban the post office around like a ping pong ball. Once it's duly appointed, you can't unappoint it. Take it back. Nope. Please. Nope. Please. No. Sam, you just can't give away a post office. You don't see it around the store, do you? <laughs> but you've been postmaster for 22 years. Yeah, and justice of the peace and water and power commissioner and superintendent of schools and editor of the newspaper and notary public, besides trying to run a store. I've been busier in an Adam's apple at a yodeling contest. <laughs> Take it back for my sake. Well, Kate, if... Look, if you don't, Uncle Joe is sure to do something foolish and get in trouble with the government and wind up in Leavenworth. Oh, I never thought of it that way. See? But the more I think of it that way, the more I like it. <laughs> Sam. When you get back to the hotel, would you mail this letter for me? Put up this one, a tight wad twilliger, the counterfeiter. Uncle Joe, Mom isn't going to like these posters in her lobby. Regulation 831.43 says that every post office has to display wanted posters. Hey, this looks like you, Uncle Joe. Oh, let's see it. Oh, there ain't no resemblance. What have you done to our lobby? Take down this rogues gallery. Regulations say we have to display them in the most conspicuous place in the lobby. Uncle Joe, guests don't want to sit around in the evening and, and look at these plug uglies. Sure they do. It'll make up for the fact that we ain't got TV. <laughs> Girls, take them down. I don't want... What is that? Every post office has to have a scale. So does the kitchen. But that scale's official. I just swore it in. Find yourself another one and swear it is. <laughs> and by the powers invested in me, I hereby confiscate this scale in the name of the United States Post Office Department of Washington, D.C. Oh, you can't do that, Joe. He's wearing a hat. Now, don't give him the right to take the station scale. Okay, Charlie, I'm putting you on a report for interfering with the postmaster. What's your full name? Gosh, Joe, you wouldn't do that to Charlie. He's your friend. What's your full name? <laughs> don't pay no attention to him, Floyd. You fellas going to help me get this up to the hotel, or do I have to call the FBI? Go on, call him. Got a dime. <laughs> oh, Betty Jo, did you take my nail polish? No, ma'am. I wonder where it is. Uncle Joe took it. Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe, is that my nail polish? Yeah, here. What are you using it for? <laughs> this is supposed to be official. Not until I paint the whole thing red, white, and blue. That's the national colors for the post office department. Oh, really? You could have had your scales painted if you hadn't have been so picky -yune. Oh, if I'd only known. Uh, do Floyd and Charlie know that you took this from the Hooterville station? They helped me bring it up. They helped you. Well, I had to flash the FBI. I can imagine. Do you mind telling me how you expect to weigh a letter on this? Oh, well, the whole thing is based on the principle that everybody weighs a certain number of pounds. So far, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, when somebody comes in to mail a letter, or as we postmasters refer to them, the mailee, I ask them to state their gross weight. Then, they get on the scale with the letter in their hand, and I subtract the gross weight as stated by the mailee from the weight shown on the official scale. And the balance is payable at the standard rate of five cents an ounce. Take it back. But it works, Kate. You want to try it? I don't have a letter. Here. How long you want? <laughs> now, how much do you weigh? 195 pounds. All right, get on the scale. See, 128 pounds. Now, you subtract 128 pounds from 195 pounds, and that leaves us... <laughs> 47 pounds. Now, at five cents an ounce... You owe me $6,922. <laughs> must be something wrong. Yeah, it is. Take it back. Take it back. 
<laughs> no thanks, Kate. Ever since I got rid of the post office, I've been able to sit back and relax. Oh, Sam, you gotta. Nope. Do you know how he's weighing letters? You're not gonna believe this. I'll show you. Now, I am the mailie. The mailie? Didn't you ever use that term? No. And you called yourself a postmaster? <laughs> anyway, the mailie states her gross weight. Steps on the scale with the letter. Now, the difference between her weight with and without the letter costs five cents per ounce. You're kidding. <laughs> Sam, take it back. I can't take it back. But I don't want... I don't want any Armeo stamp. Once a stamp is torn from the sheet, it becomes the sole property of the mailee. <laughs> you want anything else, Emmy? Pound of butter. We ain't in the butter business. Well, I always did my shopping when I went to the post office at Sam's. Well, I'll see what I can do for you. Betty Joe. Yes, Uncle Joe. Lend Mrs. Pendleford a pound of butter. <laughs> can I do something for you, Miss Prentice? I want to mail this letter. And I need a can of beans. <laughs> Betty Joe. Can of beans for Mrs. Prentice. Would you step on the scales, please? There must have been 50 women here for the post office this morning. Yeah. Boy, some excitement. You don't know what you've been missing, Mom. Oh, yes, I do. I'm missing two dozen eggs, three quarts of milk, four pounds of butter, half a turkey, a ham, a jar of pickles, four lamb chops, and a side of bacon. Look in the cupboard. <laughs> One pound of flour. Uncle Joe. I ain't got time, Kate. I got a customer for two postcards and she wants to borrow a pound of flour. You mean you've been lending all our stuff? Well, you gotta keep your post office customers happy. Sam, you've gotta take it back. What else, Kate? Well, I need a side of bacon and a sack of flour, please, Sam. Nope. What else? Well, eggs, butter. Just give me an assortment. <laughs> Sam, please. Kate, this is the biggest order I've had since I gave Joe the post office. I know. I'm getting all your customers. Well, I don't mind as long as you keep bringing me orders like this. I'll get your flour for you. Sam, please take no. it back. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, Mr. Douglas. How are you? I'm fine. Is uh, Mr. Drucker around? I want... Is he... Where's the post office? Oh, um, Uncle Joe has it. What? Sam gave it to him. He gave it to him? Can he do that? It's out at the hotel. Well, would you take this with you? Mail it for me. Oh, no, huh? I'm sorry. Why, what? It's too complicated. How can mailing a letter be complicated? Follow me. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I brought your customer. Hi, Mr. Douglas. What can I do for you? I want to mail a letter. You're going to be sorry you said that. <laughs> uh, it's a special delivery letter. Oh, boy. Special delivery, huh? What's in it? Well, it's a letter. What business is this of yours? What's in it? Don't get mad so soon. The worst is yet to come. You come in here and say you want to mail a special delivery letter. Now, how do I know what's in it special enough to be delivered special? Because I'm telling you. You got any identification? What do I need identification for? I never heard this one before. You want to mail the letter or don't you? Of course I do. How much do you weigh? You have to tell him. 185 pounds. Get on the scales. Why should I get on? You've gone this far. <laughs> Put in a penny. What kind of a... Be my guest. Yeah, 195 pounds. Uh... The scale is wrong. This scale is never wrong. It's an official U.S. mail scale. Now, the difference between your stated weight and the weight shown with a letter comes to 10 pounds. Now, 20 cents an ounce, let's see, that would come to uh, roughly uh, $920. <laughs> See what I mean? I believe I do. Mr. Bradley? Mr. Douglas? Mr. Carson? What about the letter? 
I don't care whether you take it back or not. Just help me figure out a way to get it out of the hotel. Well, there's probably some rule in the regulation book that he's violating. Any special one? Take your pick. <laughs> there it is, in black and white. You're operating an illegal post office. Kate, I don't know what you're talking about. Listen. Regulation 761.43, location of mail handling area. It is unlawful to conduct any post office business within 50 feet of a kitchen or installation where food is prepared. And my kitchen is 43 feet from this post office. There's no problem. Just move the kitchen. I am not moving the kitchen. You are moving the post office. Where? I don't care where. Just get it out of the lobby. 43 feet. <laughs> Looks good to have the lobby back to normal. Ah! Mom, what's the matter? Mama, I'm on my, my door. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe! Your room's ideal for the post office, Kate. It's just 53 feet and four inches from the kitchen, which is approved regulation. What I'm going to say isn't. Go to your rooms, girl. Oh, Mom! Out, 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 out. <laughs> Uncle Joe, this time you've gone too far. These posters, this joke, the slots in my door. Well, if that was a real inspiration, Kate, them slots are so people can mail letters at night and won't come stomping in and wake you up out of a sleep. Oh, well, that was very considerate. What was wrong with using the postmaster's room? I thought of that, but my room was within the 50-foot limit. I'll give you 10 minutes to get this junk out of here. Kate, okay, th this ain't junk. This is the United States Post Office. Where can I put it? I don't care where you put it. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Now, when you get this junk out of the hotel... <laughs> What's the matter, Uncle Joe? Your mother evicted the post office. When they picked that motto about the rain, the sleet, and the snow not stopping the mail, they didn't figure on Kate Bradley. Why don't you give the post office back to Mr. Drucker? Because I don't figure he's the type of man that should be trusted with it. Fella comes in to buy a five-cent stamp, he gives it away. This mail hasn't been delivered yet. How can I deliver it when I ain't got a post office to deliver it from? Why don't you deliver it? Who ever heard of the postmaster delivering the mail? That's like asking the Secretary of Agriculture to pick tomatoes. Well, what are you going to do with it? Well, if I could find me a couple of pretty young girls that wanted to help their Uncle Sam, I could... Uh... How'd they know I was talking about them? Hold it. Where are you going? Come here, I want to talk to you. You ever given any thought to your future? Or you just want to stay an ordinary dog all your life? Well, you can't. That's my job. Maybe if you started as a mail carrier and worked your way up, it'd be a great future for you. If anybody ever bit the postman, you could bite him back. I can get you into the civil service without taking the written exam. Hold up your right paw and repeat after me. Either rain, nor sleet, nor snow. Where'd he go? Oh, well, he wouldn't have made a good postman anyway. He doesn't know where half the people live around here. There must be somebody who... And I think I've just found... But think of all the business. The post office will bring the train. I can set it up in the baggage car. Joe, you're not ruining the cannonball like you did Kate's hotel. All right, fellas. I'll do my best to keep this out of the congressional record. Keep what out of the congressional record? The fact that you deserted your country in a time of need. The names of Charlie Pratt and Floyd Smoot will go down alongside that of Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold? Where's his post office? <laughs> Joe, we're tired and we're broke. These extra mail runs are burning up a lot of wood. <laughs> <laughs>
Right. We ain't got time to chop fuel, so we give the Krebly boy 25 cents an hour to load the tender. We want our money back. That ain't in my post office budget. <laughs> Look, fellas, are you against motherhood? Why, of course not. Then what's going to happen on Mother's Day when there's nobody to deliver the cards? <laughs> Mother's Day. I never thought of that. <laughs> we'll do it, Joe. <laughs> Thanks. I'll help you set this up in the baggage car. <laughs> Floyd, figure the government owes us. Can you make out this next line, Browning? Government owes us uh, $3.75 for wood for the cannonball. Hope this don't strain your budget. Signed, Charles Pratt, engineer. This has got to be a rib. There can't be a town named Hooterville. Fortunately, there is. That's what the postmark says. I've already checked the map. Now, it's not there. Oh, no wonder you couldn't see it, Chief. That fly had his foot on it. <laughs> the post office department has no contract to supply wood for a train. Now, Browning, you better find out where Hooterville is and check this thing out. Well, well couldn't you send somebody else, Chief? <laughs> Hey, I figured you'd be in the lobby. That's where I figured you figured I'd be. That's why I figured to be here. Where are you going with that? Well, Charlie and Floyd conked out on me. They're too cheap to pay for their own wood for the privilege of delivering the United States mail. Can you imagine that? Hey, it's my duty as a citizen. Of what country? This one. Well, I just wanted to get the facts straight before I said, no, you cannot bring that stuff back in the hotel. The mail's got to go through. Not through the hotel. Kate, I've got a lot of mail to deliver. How am I going to do it? You'll figure out a way. <laughs> Two degrees northwest, Uncle Joe, and five degrees more elevation. <laughs> That should be right on target. Oh, hi, Kate. What is that? It's the way I figured out for delivering the mail. Like they say, mother's a necessity of an inventor. <laughs> oh, is that what they say? What are you doing? Sending Fred Ziffel's mail with a modern rocket. You think that's going to go right to Fred Ziffel? Well, it can't miss. See, it's got the Ziff code on it. <laughs> All conditions go. Roger. Uncle Joe, that is the silliest, most impractical, most idiotic. Fred Ziff will be reading that before you can say it. Ah! Who, 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 who was the idiot that, that did this? <laughs> No. Gee, I wish Uncle Joe would write from wherever he is. Did you look under the water tank? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam, I'm so glad that you have the post office back. Well, I kind of missed it. <laughs> oh, could I please mail this letter? How much do you weigh? I don't say. Step on the scale. Look! You want the post office back at the Shady Rest? <laughs> One hundred and twenty-eight pounds. <laughs>
motion this has been a film ways presentation